Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own souls and from the evil results of our actions. If Allah guides someone, none can lead that person astray. And if Allah leads someone to stray, none can guide him. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I further testify that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. People of Iman, observe taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. And do not die except submitting to Allah and Islam. Mankind, observe taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single person and from him created his spouse and then spread from the two of them multitudes of men and women. Observe taqwa of Allah by whom you make requests of one another and do not sever ties of kinship. Indeed, Allah is always watchful over you. People of Iman, observe taqwa of Allah and speak words that are correct. If you do so, Allah will guide you to perform righteous deeds and he will forgive your sins. When a person obeys Allah and his messenger, he will achieve the greatest success. Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. The worst of matters are those which are invented and then claimed to be part of Islam. Every such invention is considered a bid'ah, and every bid'ah leads to the hellfire. Dear Muslims, Allah sent messengers and revealed scriptures to them in order to call people to sincerely devote all worship to Allah alone without any partner. Out of Allah's mercy, He sent His messengers and scriptures to mankind. Our Ummah is the last Ummah there will be. And out of Allah's mercy, He sent the best and most virtuous messenger to this Ummah, that being our Prophet Muhammad. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. Out of all the messengers, Allah granted him exclusive favors. And Allah did the same to this Ummah out of all the others. The only path to follow and the only channel to happiness lies in believing and accepting what the messenger informed us of avoiding all that he prohibited, and only worshipping Allah by way of what he prescribed. Dear Muslims, Allah's Messenger Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, was merciful, caring, and sincere towards his Ummah, and he always loved good things for them. Allah the Most Exalted said, There has indeed come to you a messenger from among yourselves. It grieves him that you should suffer any hardship. He is concerned about you, and he is kind and merciful to the people of Iman. Part of the Prophet's guidance, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, was to make a bequest. And that took the form of giving money to people and also giving counsel to people. The former type is discussed in fiqh and it pertains to upholding ties with others by way of wealth. The latter type pertains to imparting direction, bringing about benefits, and averting harms. There were times when the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, would say, Usika bi taqwa Allah. I give you the following words as a bequest. You must observe taqwa of Allah. And some of the companions would say, Awsani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, bequeathed the following words of counsel to me. When we examine the words of counsel he bequeathed, we find several varieties. As a whole, they encompass all realms of human life in this world and the hereafter, though they are generally more geared towards the hereafter, and they are characterized by brevity and comprehensiveness. One such instance was counsel regarding the Book of Allah the Most Exalted by reading it and acting in compliance with his teachings. Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, stated, I had said, Messenger of Allah, I would like you to counsel me. He replied, adhere to reading the Qur'an and following its teachings, because doing that will provide you with light upon the earth and rewards stored for you in the heavens. This was collected by Ibn Hibban. This magnificent scripture gives order to all facets of human life. As for one's relationship with Allah, 
It clarifies correct beliefs and the matters that are unseen to us among the six pillars of Iman, and it also explains the prescribed acts of worship. In addition, the Qur'an gives order to people's interactions and exchanges which bind them to each other. It unifies them with the brotherhood prescribed by Islam, as in the statement of Allah, the people of Iman are to be nothing besides brothers to each other. It also builds the family upon a foundation of affection, mercy, and fulfillment of each other's rights. Allah said, wives have rights that their husbands must fulfill in an acceptable manner. Just as the husbands have rights, their wives must fulfill in an acceptable manner. However, Allah has given husbands a degree of responsibility, which is beyond what He has given women. And Allah is Almighty, Most Wise. The Qur'an also gives order to earnings and making a living by acquiring wealth, which is an essential for life. Allah said, Thus you may travel throughout all parts of the earth and eat from the provisions Allah has granted you. The Qur'an gives order to maintaining justice upon the earth. Allah said, we indeed sent our messengers being clear evidences. We sent them we sent down with them scriptures containing directives, and we sent down with them the balance of justice so that people could deal with each other fairly. We also sent down iron, which is a source of formidable strength and a source of numerous benefits for people. All of that was done in order for Allah to make apparent the knowledge He always had about which people truly support His religion and His messengers, even though those people do not see Allah in this world. Allah is certainly most powerful and almighty. In this single eye, Allah mentioned three realms of authority, prescribing directives, preordaining matters, and making things happen. And He also mentioned even more in the very same eye. All of the foregoing are meanings that reflect depth, wisdom, and correctness. May Allah bless all of us by the magnificent Qur'an and may He enable us to glean benefit from the evidences and wisdom it contains. I say this much and I implore Allah to forgive all the sins that have emanated from myself and all of you. Thus you should also ask Allah's forgiveness and repent to Him as He continually grants forgiveness and accepts repentance. All praise is due to Allah, the most generous bestower. He blessed us with the Qur'an and made it a source of inspiration for people who have insight and knowledge. It does not become worn out due to the passage of time or due to being repeated often. I praise Allah for His favors and I ask Him for even more of them. I implore Allah to grant commendation and protection to His beloved Messenger whose conduct was an embodiment of the Qur'an. And I implore Allah to do the same for the Messenger's family and companions since they read the Qur'an, studied it among themselves, counseled each other regarding it, and became examples to be followed by all who seek enlightenment in following their path. The magnificent Qur'an is light for those whom Allah guides. By it, He raises some people and lowers others. When a person adheres to it and complies with it, Allah would grant him ultimate happiness. However, when a person forsakes it and turns away from it, he would lose in both this world and the hereafter, and he would end up among the most miserable people. The Qur'an is more powerful than any sort of incantation that anyone could ever devise. The Qur'an came from Allah Himself. Therefore, I say to you all, whenever trials become intense and whenever difficulties you face seem insurmountable, adhere to the Book of Allah and follow its guidance. True happiness lies in adhering to the guidance that has come to us from Allah Himself. The Qur'an is the greatest form of mentioning Allah and people's hearts most certainly find solace in mention of Allah. Always bear in mind that this speech of Allah 
has more virtue and status than the speech of anyone else. The people who are most deserving of being put in positions of responsibility are those who adhere to the Qur'an's teachings sincerely, striving to please Allah. I beseech Allah to make myself and all of you among the people of the Qur'an, since they are the people whom Allah grants exclusive care and reward. I further beseech Allah to make us among those who retain the Qur'an, follow it as it deserves to be followed, comply with it, and adhere to its guidance. Allah the Almighty said, This Qur'an is a book we have sent down to you replete with blessings in order for people to contemplate its evidences and in order for people of sound insight to take heed. In conclusion, remember the instruction that Allah gave us when He said, Indeed, Allah grants His commendation to the Prophet and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah's commendation for the Prophet and invoke Allah to grant him protection as well. O oh Allah, grant your commendation to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad just as you granted your commendation to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. O oh, Allah, grant your blessings to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, just as you granted your blessings to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. O oh, Allah, be pleased with the successors of your Prophet in leading our Ummah, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of the other companions and those who continue striving to follow their path. O oh, Allah, grant us safety and security in our lands and make our leaders individuals who are righteous. O oh Allah, grant your guidance to our leader as well as his deputy. O oh Allah, grant them your care and protection. O oh Allah, guide all leaders of Muslims to govern by the teachings of your book and the sunnah of your messenger. O oh Allah, none has the right to be worshipped except you. You need none, whereas we are in dire need of you. O oh Allah, we implore you to send rain for us. O oh Allah, send rain for us that will be a means of benefit and advantage for us. O oh Allah, we seek refuge with you against all forms of harm and from all ills. Servants of Allah, remember that Allah commands you to do all that is upright and correct and He forbids you from all that is unjust and incorrect. Remain grateful to Allah for His blessings and He will grant you more. And remember that Allah has complete knowledge of everything that you do.